What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Evolve Your Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Gold, and today <clears throat> on the show, I've got with you with us a very special guest from Denver, Colorado. He has multiple Brazilian jiu-jitsu schools, and he is a men's coach who helps people to combat isolation and loneliness and step into deep connection with themselves and with others. It's a pleasure to have you here on the podcast. Welcome, Robert Wonderlook. Well, Dave, I appreciate you having me on, truly. Um, it's a pleasure. Well, let's dive right into it. So in today's day and age, it seems like most people are disconnected. They're disconnected from others. They're disconnected from their self. And they're so caught up in little narratives or melodramas or what's going on on social media. So why do you feel so passionate about helping people to reconnect with themselves? I think it's the way we have innately been as human beings for a very long time. And I think it's only been in the re recent history that we've really found this much disconnection. As much as we're connected through these devices, I mean, you and I are connected between probably over a thousand miles, you know, just in this moment. And yeah, we get to see each other and we get to interact, but it's also, we're also missing so much of what we used to be as human beings, you know, um, just even 150 years ago. Just imagine the reliance that we needed to sur just simply survive just a hundred years ago. Familial bonds, all of those things, you know, um, we're, I think we're just, uh, yeah, I would say that devices have brought us to a level of disconnection that, you know, we, and distraction for that matter. I mean, how much of our time is, is spent through distraction instead of through connection and actually having real conversations with people? Well, it's almost like numbing of the masses, whether it's television, food, drugs, alcohol. <clears throat> Most people use those substances as a way to escape their pain or their fear or their frustration or whatever difficult moment or emotion is arising in their experience of life. And one thing that I've noticed about being here in Sayulita is going to all of these really intense experiences whether it's a sweat lodge or i just got out of my second ice bath and by putting myself into this state of discomfort this state of extreme presence and focus on my breath um, what happens is my whole mind expands and I'm able to see things from a new perspective, a new light. And then when I connect with others, I connect with them deeper. And my intuition about whether or not I should spend time with them or where we should go becomes much easier to follow. And so I'm wondering if, you know, you're a guy who's really into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for many years. What is it like um, when it comes to doing jujitsu and doing it from an intuitive state? Well, we all have to build to that intuitive state, right? It, it, it's a process, but there's not many things. I mean, there's ice baths, there's other things that, you know, can bring us and lead us to discomfort. Um, and jujitsu is just one of those, it's another one of those modalities, I guess you could say. Um, it forces you to be present you have no choice but to be present. Um, and it's, it's also engaging because you have this opportunity to interact with another human being and have true physical contact at the same time you're having connection, right? So contact, as one of my mentors, Dewey Freeman, you know, says that contact over time leads to connection, right? So just understanding that those energetic contacts happen and they happen often on the mats. Um, and I just want, you know, it's something that I learned from him that's really changed the way that I view the, the interactions that we have on the mat. But having someone's weight on top of you, not being able to escape something right away, 
feeling what it's like to have your arm, you know, go to that point of almost popping from someone doing an arm lock and, you know, that trust that you build from tapping that person and then them being able to let go, you know, getting choked, um, things along those lines. Like I have a, I have a current client that I work with in coaching and he's also one of my jujitsu students. Um, and he had a massive breakthrough one day just because we went over what's called a rear naked choke where someone has a choke hold on you and he felt so powerless in that moment. And then from there, we were really able to explore, well, where else does this, where else did powerlessness show up in his life? And we really got to some great depth just from that, that ability to push that envelope or that ability to kind of be right on that edge of discomfort. So it brings up a lot. And that's what, that's what helps jujitsu. That's what one of the benefits of jujitsu is it definitely brings you to those edges. It makes you explore those areas of yourself that you may not know of really been there or we are aware of there and you have to move through them in order to, to progress if that makes sense i think it was helio gracie who said a man of peace confident in himself dominates dominates his adversary with his moral strength not with his physical power and the quickest way to lose is trying to win and i really absolutely resonate. yeah go for it Absolutely. So um, another one of my really good friends and, and mentors, Traver Bohm, um, I'm a part of his Uncivilized Nation. And um, he's someone, you know, he wrote the book Man Uncivilized. And one of the tenets in that book is to be dangerous, but not a danger. And what does that mean? And another way of saying that is let others be safe as I walk among them. That I, I can be dangerous, but because I'm because I'm dangerous and because I work through those things and because I put myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable, I also have the ability through other work too, like shadow work and therapy and, you know, inner child work and all those other kind of modalities that <clears throat> I get to understand what it is that made me dangerous. I become less dangerous to the rest of society because I'm not flipping my lid you know, in anger all the time, everyone, you know, anytime someone cuts me off. Or Reactivity. Road. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, as we process through jujitsu, at first, when you're a brand new white belt and you begin to train jujitsu, you kind of just go straight to your Olympic system. You yeah. you'd go to your lowest common denominator. It's fight, flight, or freeze right away. Survival. Right? survival exactly because you don't know any better you may have learned a few techniques but you haven't learned them to a degree yet that they're actually embodied in you mm -hmm. you know and that takes a process of learning that and then as you become better at jujitsu all of those things kind of slow down and then you're not then you're able to stay less conscious it's more in the body but the body doesn't force the brain to go into that fight flight or freeze mode right that, yeah. that adrenaline dump is a little more controlled, that we're able to keep more of our prefrontal cortex online. We're able to access more of our memory instead of just being kind of a mindless animal there for a second, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I think that this correlation of staying calm under pressure is very important for the online entrepreneur of 2023, especially when if you're a coach or you're a consultant these days, many people, especially as you start to do more good things in the world and become more successful, will try to bring you down. And public shaming and canceling and negativity towards people that are doing well and helping others has never been so high. So I think that whether it's jujitsu or something else that gets you into that state of surrender in the moment so that you can be present and combat whatever is happening to you with grace i guess there's a reason why it was called gracie right with grace and with with humbleness and with an internal strength and power then you really will stand out from the rest of these online entrepreneurs who go through the wave of up and down, yo-yoing their income and never feeling fully fulfilled and fully in line with their purpose. Does that resonate with you, Robert? Yeah, I think it's it's very valid to understand 
understanding how someone's pressure feels when you're training jujitsu, understanding like it's that, it's that piece of awareness, right? So I, I kind of have a formulation of how we progress through the work generally, right? Like first we have to admit that there's a problem, but admittance just doesn't happen once, does it? Many times we have to admit numerous times. We have to say like, it's a repetitious act of like, okay, I have a problem. Maybe, you know, maybe it's drinking. Man, I have a drinking problem, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you stop drinking right away. You fall back and then you go back and then, oh man, I have a drinking problem. Man, man I really need to, and it's that repetitious act that happens, right? Well, that's step that we, one of awareness. Just because you're aware of something doesn't mean that it's actually shifted in your reality. 100%. And it's a massive shift though. Like bringing, so in other words, like the four stages of, you know, just the neurological process of learning anything. The first mm -hmm. stage is, un, you know, it's I'm unconsciously incompetent. Like I have no... I didn't even know it existed before. Mm -hmm. So unconscious incompetence. I didn't even know it existed in the world. And that admittance is then moving it. And it's a massive shift is now we've moved it into conscious incompetence, meaning that I know that I, I know that I don't know how to deal with it. I know that I don't know how to do it. Maybe in jujitsu, I learned to move. I didn't even know that move existed three minutes ago. Now I've seen that move for the first time, but I still know that I don't know that. And then that's that piece of admittance. That's that. That's where I see admittance at. And then awareness is when we start to move it into that conscious competence, where we now see something coming. We feel it in our body. Like, uh, man, I feel like I'm starting to get activated by, you know, like every time my mom says that, you know, like I need to get a job or every time my mom says I need to do this differently or anytime I may feel judgment, like I, instead of going like and shutting down and denying those things and moving away from those things, now I have an opportunity to say, oh, I feel that coming. Oh, I feel, ah, okay. I know where this is. I know where this is going. All right. Maybe, maybe I still will shut down, but it's only going to be for the next three hours. You can accept of, it for what it is rather than fight it. Right. And then after that, after doing many, many reps of that and feeling something come on, then we have the opportunity to move into acceptance. Right. So admittance through repetition leads to awareness. Awareness through repetition leads to acceptance. Now, just because we accept something doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. Again. I'm a I've been doing jujitsu for over 18 years. And it would be like me telling you, Dave, that like, I'll never get arm locked again. I, I accept arm locks, right? I know that they're out there. I, I've been arm locked many, many, many times through my career. But it doesn't mean that I'm not ever going to get arm locked again. Yeah. In fact, I probably will be. But it's how small the circle is from going back into awareness and then bringing that back into acceptance is the big shift, right? So now instead of a three-month process where I used to, you know what I mean, like, kick the can down the road and feel bad and you know be angry and be resentful and carry all this stuff now i can do that process in the matter of hours sometimes to say recognize what it is feel it right admit that it's coming on feel that it's coming on and then bring a piece of acceptance to it and say okay having that grace having that compassion for myself to understand that i'm okay i'm a human being of course this is going to happen again, and that's okay Right. I think it's a big misnomer that we try to tell ourselves that like I've completely dealt with something. Right. That like, oh, I know that. Yeah. Okay. My, but, my healing journey is complete. And it's like you're always releasing trauma and there's always mirrors that are coming up for us in our lives. And it's just a matter of how we choose to confront them and embrace them and admit them and accept them and then really surrender to them which is i think what enables certain people to move on from spiral to spiral from chapter to chapter and not take so much weight and trauma and baggage with them as they're moving into new experiences and new opportunities because when they do that and they're carrying all this heavy energy around it can be really difficult 
to then say yes and receive that new lesson or that new gift when your mind when your mind is already clouded. It's like if you go onto the mat in jujitsu and you're trying to roll and you're thinking about your spouse or something that happened at home or with your kids or whatnot. And it can probably make it much more difficult to really be there in the moment. And the same thing just now in the ice bath. After about 30 seconds to a minute, I fully surrendered. I got my breath under control doing some box breathing. I put my hands in a nidra and I just started to relax and feel into my body and almost transport myself to a different place in time. And it's actually possible, which is really incredible. Yeah, man. Um, we have a saying in jujitsu that the mat never lies, mm -hmm. meaning like it will tell you exactly where you are all the time. And there's always somebody who can beat you. There's always going to be somebody who's going to catch you, right? So you have to be present in jujitsu. Now that, that comes with a caveat though. Because at a certain point, you're going to do so many ice baths, right? That you may be able to then get out of presence, right? Or I've done so much jujitsu that sometimes I can find myself thinking about things outside of it because so much of it's just happening, happening through my body neurologically, through muscle memory, that yeah. it then creates the ability for me to now be more in my head instead of more in my body. So I think it's important that we also, it's, there's not just one way. There's not just, just jujitsu is just the fix or just ice baths is just the fix, right? It's like behind the jujitsu or the ice bath is the challenge. It's the opportunity for growth and expansion. And if it becomes comfortable, then you may resort back to old subconscious reprogramming or tendencies or habits that are no longer serving you. And that's, that's where connection comes in, right? That's mm -hmm. where we, that's where, you know, ice baths, jujitsu allow us to build a connection with us first, right? And I think that's, that's my true posit that we must form that connection to self first. We got to understand where, what, who we are. We got to understand our programming. We got to understand the things, you know what I mean? That bring us to those things, but we can't also do that on our own. I think there would be a lot of men out there that would agree with this statement that like, I did it for years. I did. I suffered in isolation for years, Definitely. but I read the books. Right. And I, but I'm reading the books and I'm doing, I'm doing the work, yeah. but it was, it wasn't with, it wasn't in brotherhood. It wasn't in connection with others. It wasn't with anyone else. Right? Or with intention. We can sit down and we can put gratitude and intention in even the food that we eat or even the way in which we send that message to someone and we press send. A lot of times we do it unconsciously, but there is energy in everything. We are energetic beings. And when we put intention behind how we show up to the jujitsu class or how we show up to whatever activity lights our soul, we can really dive into the depths of connecting with ourself and with that moment on an incredibly profound level. I completely agree. And I think that part of that has to be done in community. Mm. Because you have to have an example of that. Therapists and coaches and mentors and elders, that they, they have all set a, an example for us to learn from. Yes. We got to also take opportunity to then learn how to do those things. Like I wouldn't have you come in for a jujitsu class and teach you a very, you know what I mean? Like technical technique for your very first technique or something that would, you know, that you would use a little bit further down the line. I would show you the most fundamental and basic thing that there would be to learn in jujitsu first. Right. Because that's, you got to take that step first. And I think that's sometimes a foul. That's something that we convince ourselves. That's a story that, oh, well, I should be all the way down here. I don't, you know, this stuff just seems too easy and I don't need that stuff. I need to be, you know, further down the road already. But like, and we don't get further down the road without a foundation. We can't build a house without a foundation. And what foundation have you created and what home have you created um, for people in the online space? What type of community 
um are you currently facilitating are you facilitating one um so i'm i'm working on that actually i'm working on a space um i have nexus.coaching on instagram i'm in the process of building my website um i'm in the process of of building more community through workshops online workshops in-person workshops um everything along those lines but i'm i'm putting out content right now that's kind of the baby steps and then again the website will kind of come next and then things like this connections like this where you know the podcasts and things along those lines i think are important but i, I definitely appreciate that question um, and besides that, I have my, you know, like I definitely am in the community in the sense of I have a jujitsu academy that, and then I also have four, yeah, four other schools, five other schools under me, you know, so I have two others. So I have my academy that I own and operate and then five other schools that are independently owned and operated by other individuals that seek rank under me and learn how to teach jujitsu under me. So, um, I have that large community that that Huge. I am getting the words out, you know, getting the word out into. And <clears throat> so, yeah, I built that kind of first and now yeah. it's building more of my um, online community and then also just moving more into the coaching realm also. That's beautiful. You have a huge community in um, Wyoming and I guess in, in Denver as well. And I really mm -hmm. look forward to seeing how that all evolves for you this year. And uh, the community that I created was called the Align Leader Mastermind. And it's a community for conscious entrepreneurs to come together and to not feel alone on this journey of creating abundance in their lives and in others as well. And so, Robert, um, we're almost at the top of the hour. I want to make sure I've got room for others to come in here. So it's been an absolute pleasure to connect with you and to talk about the method and the bulletproof recession mindset so that you can make it through whatever you're going through in your life as an online entrepreneur, as someone that's into jujitsu, as someone that has no idea what we're talking about, but really wants to connect with other people on a deeper level. You learn the art of connection, the lessons from jujitsu, you are going to put yourself as a one percenter out there in the world. And I would say this, if anybody is listening to this and doesn't understand, just reach out to somebody. Mm. Reach, you know, I know, Dave, yourself, you would you would sit down and have a conversation with someone. I know that I'm open to having, having a conversation to anybody, right? Like nobody's alone in these processes. You're not alone in your struggle. Seek connection. And support people who you resonate with or who you find interesting. Don't just be someone that scrolls on Instagram or Facebook and consumes, 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 but never drops a like or a comment or sends a message. Because if you really want to build a, an engine of positivity and love, it won't just be through consumption, it'll also be through creation and connection. It's an amazing point mm -hmm. you make. One of my biggest, the one of the things, one of my core concepts that I live in my life is reciprocation. <clears throat> reciprocation is one of my core values. And I think it's really important that we reciprocate with each other. If there's something that resonates with you, then join that conversation because it's a learning opportunity. It's an opportunity to expand. And I know that we're kind of moving into a little bit more conversation. And I know you kind of wrap this up, but I truly appreciate your time in. I just wanted to add that at the end. I think it's really important it. to know that we are, we are not alone as much as we feel we are alone. You're not alone in your experience. I guarantee someone else has gone through something very similar and would love to have a conversation with you. So um, reach out. Don't be, definitely don't fear having connection with others. So powerful words to end this episode. You guys know where to find me at Dave Gold on Instagram, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>